All right. Well, good morning and um, welcome to the Board of Elections here. It's our uh, third day of early voting and we are busy. <laughs> we had uh, two and a half times the amount of early voters on the first day of voting than we had in 2016. And about seven, I think the final number was 1748 yesterday uh, of persons that were here to vote. Um, also, in the past two days, uh, 4,000 ballots have been dropped off at our drop box outside. Um, we've had some curbside voting uh, for disabled. Um, we've just had it all. Um, uh, it's been busy. Um, we've had a lot of people um, coming in um, to vote. Um, some people have brought their absentee ballots in that they got. The post office delivered them like the next day. Um, I'm asking people not to bring in those absentee ballots. I guess there was some scuttlebutt around about uh, signature verifications and some media flurry about uh, rejection of ballots because of signatures. And um, during the presidential primary, we rejected um, 59 uh, ballots because they had problems with the signatures. So what that means is that um, they either didn't sign their ballots and we contacted them with um, a letter or a phone call or both and asked them to sign it um, and they didn't respond back to us um, or the signature didn't match. And that's one of our security um, methods to make sure that the right person is voting the right ballot. Uh, um, the next mail drop is October 9th, which is tomorrow, then on the 13th and October 16th and then daily thereafter. Um, we've got um, over 102,124 to be exact request for uh, mail ballots so far. So, and that's, gosh, that's a quarter of um, the registered voters in the county. So good participation. We're expecting a high turnout for this election. Um, Merle Madrid with the Secretary of State's office, I was on a, a group uh, symposium with him the other night with Dayton Daily News, and he said the Secretary of State's office is expecting a 75% turnout. So it's going to be busy. What we're hoping is that people do vote by mail. Um, it's the safest way to vote. Um, it's the easiest way to vote, and it also uh, just keeps COVID, keeps those, uh, keeps that COVID curve flat. Um, anybody have any questions? Sure. Um, when will we actually have a total of the new registrations? Like, do we know how many voters are now registered? Yeah, we will, Chris, we have to, you know, Chris knows he's been around a long time. Um, we have to lock down that number. I would say, let's see, voter registration. Let me check something. Um, October 6th. I would say by the 14th, um, we'll probably have a good number for you. Um, we're still processing those. We got maybe, I'm going to say eight to 10,000 online new voter registrations. They're easier and take less time to process. Um, but still, um, you know, we'll be here. We're working a, a lot of hours and weekends to get all that done for the voters. And where, where does registration stand right now? As Come far on. as numbers? Yeah. Uh, that, that is on our website, but let me pull that up for you. It's right on our front page um, for you guys if um, you need to know. It's under registration totals and the total registered voters as of this morning is 371,185. Jan, I had a question. I'm sure. Malia from WDT and I wanted to know, do you have the demographics of early voters just yet? Do you know what group, age groups, uh, uh, male, female, gender, who's turning out in early voting right now? We leave that to the experts um, outside of the Board of Elections who trace that and track that. Probably the parties uh, might ha you know, run data um, you know, from uh, our public information that's online and can tell you, but I, we don't track that. Do you have a total number of people who have voted in person? I, th I think you mentioned like 1748 yesterday. Do you have yeah. them? And then um, it was 2162 the first day. One question that's come to us is um, people will wonder, are the absentee ballots and those vote in either mail-in or voted in person, are those counted 
right away or what, what's the process for, for counting those? Does it happen on election day or? Um, nothing can be counted or tabulated until election day. But everything's counted. We, uh, we get that same question every year and you're probably sick of getting asked it too. Do the absentee ballots count? Yes, they do. Um, they always did and they always will. Um, they're opened and getting, uh, gotten ready to be processed and counted, but they're not counted like today, I'm not allowed to count them. I can just get them ready, flatten them out to be fed through the scanner. And then we tabulate all the votes at 735 on election night, including the first group, which are the absentee ballots and the early person in person ballots. Right, and when you say tabulate, that's synonymous with counting, basically. Yes. Okay. In uh, the Columbus Dispatch reported, I think today that there are some point in the last couple of days that there were some issues with ballots in Franklin County as yes. far as people receiving their wrong ballots. Have there been any reports of that in Montgomery County or in the area that you're aware of? Um, we had, um, I think a husband wife team um, that that's, we haven't had any like issues like where the ballots were delivered to the wrong address or anything. What we've had is sometimes we'll have like a, we have, we haven't had any issues of the ballots being mailed to the wrong place that we're aware of yet. Usually that, that's what happens the first few days. So we're always here with our fingers crossed, hoping that doesn't happen. And, you know, my heart goes out to the election officials in uh, Franklin County, um, because that, that's a tough thing to deal with, but they will straighten it out. They've got records of who they sent it to. So they will be able to soil and deface all the ballots that they sent out and issue new ones. And it's a good thing it was early in the game. So that they'll have that corrected and they'll have it corrected quickly. I think a question came up via chat. Somebody was asking about the postage. It's uh, one postage stamp to mail it. And you don't need a postage stamp if you're dropping it off uh, down at the drop box here at the Board of Elections. And we have one drop box outside. We also have a uh, ballot box in our lobby that you can use as well. Parking is free. And also um, there were some questions with uh, precinct election officials who are going to help us at the polls. Um, wanting to know what we're providing, what PPE equipment we're providing. Well, we're providing um, everything that we have to under the law. Uh, we're providing masks, we're providing the plastic shields that go over, um, we're providing um, sanitary wipes for the tables, um, alcohol wipes for the precinct election officials to use on the um, machinery. We're providing paper towels and spray sanitizer. Um, we are cleaning all of the polling locations that we are utilizing after after the fact, um, we're coming in with a sanitizing company and sanitizing everything. Um, we also, uh, we have a huge trash can that we're putting all the PPE supplies in. And that also includes um, medical, not medical grade, but uh, gowns and gloves for people that may have COVID or COVID-like symptoms that have shown up at the polls to vote. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, bottles of hand sanitizer. Um, Oh, and everybody gets a pen. Let me see if I have one here. Like, a, yeah, a special Board of Elections pen with a stylus and a pen on the other end. Um, so we're not sharing pens. And your I Voted Today sticker. So we're not handing those out. You just pick them up. Somebody, one of our readers wants to know whether they actually need to use, if the identification process is any different, if they vote either early at the Board of Elections or at their precinct. No, there's no difference. It's the same all across the board for everybody. And can you explain what that is? Um, they have to present um, some form of ID with their name and current address on it. Now, if their driver's license has expired, um, this time because of COVID and the difficulties people had getting to uh, a Bureau of Motor Vehicle to uh, update their driver's license um, because it expired, um, we are taking those driver's license um, that have their correct address on them, but may have expired. And this is a, for this election only until further notification. And that's the only change in the voter ID requirements. But you can bring in like a utility bill, um, a state ID, uh, CCW license, um, anything that has your name and your current address on it. What you can't bring is a passport. Um, let's see what else, a social security card, because they don't have your address on them. Um, I think that's about it. Pretty much anything goes.
I think I'm good. Yeah, the voters have been great in line. Everybody's got masks on, um, so we really appreciate the safety that they're um, showing and their concerns and uh, maintaining. Um, we'd like to, to maintain good social distance when they're lined up in the garage. Um, the six feet, it still applies, so we'd like everybody to follow that. We don't want to have to be the police down here all the time. Um, and uh, we, we do have masks available if someone uh, forgets to wear theirs. Um, we have masks available at every um, area of the county building and sanitizer available in every level here. And um, if you don't see something and need it, please just ask us. We are here to help and accommodate whatever you need. 